Study. Let's get it. Study time. Study time. Let's get it. Study time. All right. VT said, lead me. Lead me, lead me, lead me. All right. Act 6. 1 through 15. Act 6. Somebody say, study time. Put in there, study time, study time. Leave me, Lord. Say, leave me, Lord. Study time tonight. In Jesus' name. We're going to have some Bible study for about 20 minutes, and then we'll, we'll move on. See what God has for us tonight. Are you excited to eat of the Word? Let's eat the Word tonight. Let's, let's uh, digest it. The Word of God in Act 6. They grew in the word. All right. Get ready. Act six. God is good. So, Act 6, study time tonight. We'll go before the Lord and see how we might digest the Word. The Word of God is Jesus. Jesus is the Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Amen. All things were made by Him. Without Him, it was not anything made that was made. In Him was the light. And the light was the light of man. Light shining in darkness. Darkness comprehended it not. Amen. The word is God. God is the word. All right. Acts 6 and 1 through 15. I'm Pastor Jimmy Foster. And we are going to have a mighty Bible study tonight. Because there are too many things going on in the world. That uh, we cannot afford not to get close to God. And pray. And uh a lot of uh, heinous crimes, egregious acts going on, just wickedness in the land, wickedness. And the Bible says in Chronicles, my people call by my name. What's his name? Jesus. Humble themselves and pray. They'll turn from their wicked ways. And uh, God will heal the land if we learn to pray. We've got to find out who is this Jesus that we are praying to? Who is this God? That we are praying to. 
Amen. Amen. So humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Let's pray right now. We're going to have a good time. There's a lot of time we think we're having a good time in the world. You're not having a good time unless you talk about the goodness of God. It's not good. It's not a good time if you're not talking about the good news, the gospel. Oh, that's a revelation God just showed me. We're not having a good time. Somebody said, let the good times roll. When you roll up joints of marijuana, you, you drink, you, you party, you uh, corral, you do all those type of things. Uh, but and you call it the good times. How dare we mix good with evilness, good with our carnal uh, tendencies, natures, and calamities. How dare we? Good time is talking about Jesus and letting him in and control our life. Lord Jesus, we thank you tonight during this Bible study that you open up our hearts. You mend our broken hearts. Lord, do heart surgery on us that our souls might be saved. Do open heart surgery on us tonight, Lord, with your word. However you want to do it, we'll say it's good and acceptable. We have faith that Whatever, Lord Jesus, you want to use to give us the energy of the Holy Spirit, the wisdom, however you do it, we'll say it's good and acceptable. Let the good times roll in Jesus' name. All right. Acts 6, 1 through 15. Acts 6, 1 through 15. And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, uh, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the same pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. And Philip and uh, Prochorus and Nicanor and Timon, Timon and Parmenas and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. Verse 6, I'm in Acts 6, verse 6. Whom they set before the apostles and when... They had prayed, they laid their hands on them. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, and the Cyrenians, and the Alexandrians, and of them of Cilicia and Asia, disputing with Stephen disputing with Stephen and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake then they suborned men which said we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God and they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came up on him and caught him and brought him to the council and set him false set up false witnesses which said, this man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. And all that sat in the council, looking said for fastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of of an angel. Amen. I want to come to you on the topic tonight of servant ministers, servant leaders, servant ministers. Amen. A subtopic, I'll serve even if I die. I'll minister under the power of the Holy Ghost even if it kills me. You're under the power of the Holy Ghost. It's all right to die in Jesus' name. But God is looking for servants. Stephen was not one of the 12 disciples, which was John, John, James, 
James, uh, I'm sorry, John, uh, uh, James, James, Judas, and Jude, Matthew. And then we got uh, Philip, Bartholomew, Simon and Simon, one is Peter. And uh, then we have, uh, uh, it'll come to me later when I'm trying to quote it, Andrew, Peter's brother, uh, named Bartholomew, that's uh, Nathaniel, same as Nathaniel. And I'm missing one, I think, unless I went through them all. Matthew. No, anyway, it'll come to me later. But Stephen was not one of the disciples, but he was willing to put his life on the line. What was going on is anytime God is doing something great in the church, you're going to have the adversary. You're going to have people that come against it. He's doing something great, something wonderful in the church. And here come the Greeks, the Grecians against, against, say against the Hebrews. When you're doing something great and God's working in you, here comes the Hebrews. We're in the book of Acts this month, and I think we're going to continue it for another one month, maybe two, which might make three months when the book of Acts. This is my special life with Jesus. This is our season of our special life with Jesus. We're in the book of Acts. Acts is the, the birth of the new church. The new church is not just Jesus dying. In Luke, he died. He was buried. He rose again. And uh, boom. It begins with a bang in Acts, the new church. You don't have a new church if you just have God's grace. You only have hope, or you just have God's uh, mercies and you accept that he died for you. But you are in the church triumphant. You are in uh, the kingdom of God if you are living with God's spirit in you. God didn't just die to save us and raise from the dead to save us, but he did that. So that there can be some acts in the church of the apostles, acts in the church of St. Joseph, in the church of Jesus Tabernacle, the book of Acts. Where are your acts? Amen. The Greeks, Grecians against the Hebrews, their widows were neglected. They found a problem. I told you Sunday, we got a problem. They had a problem uh, with the name Jesus in four and five because of the uh, healing of the, uh, the uh, lame man. In Acts, they had, and Peter grabbed his hand and lifted him up, so they had a problem with the name Jesus. You can do everything you want to do, prosper, prosper, bring people out of sickness, but once you mention Jesus, once you're truthful, then we have a problem. So the problem now, the Greeks found with them, the Grecians said, uh, your widows are neglected, and we got to take care of them. They begging all the time. They always need help, and you're not helping them. So there was a problem. So the 12 disciples that I just named, uh, they called the multitude of them and said, we shouldn't leave the word of God and uh, serve to every uh, detailed need of the church. Uh, we're the disciples, we're the apostles. We need some help. So what they did, uh, uh, they equated it to serving tables. But what they meant is serving. And, and they served. But they needed some detailed help. At like Moses uh, needed help. And Jethro said, you need 50 helpers. So in verse 3, uh, come on, now let me catch you up. Say, I am a servant minister. I'm a servant leader. Amen. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report. you got to have character if you're a servant. If you, and you got to be full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. Find seven men. Can you at least find seven to help us? We have to keep ministering and, and baptizing and, and getting 3,000 to be saved and adding to the church daily. But we need help tending to the widows, tending to the people in need. Jesus said, as much as you've done to the least of my, uh, the least, you got to, uh, you got to serve the least in the best way. Amen. But uh, they were full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom whom ye, we may appoint over this business to help us out with the people in need, especially the widows. So they appointed deacons, Deacon Stephen, seven deacons they appointed, full of the Holy Ghost. You gotta be full of the Holy Ghost. And I'm gonna tell you, we got some major problems, not just shootings, not just drugs, but we have uh, adultery, fornication. 
We just got some lying issues. People don't have a heart, and we need Jesus to do heart surgery, open heart surgery on us. We got some major issues. And they blame in churches, they blame in preachers. Uh, everybody gets a little bit of blame. If, if, if we gotta be accountable, we gotta we gotta be accountable. But the blame, hallelujah, uh, should be on our lack or inability to make disciples. And uh, if you call yourself a Christian, if you call yourself a church-going believer in Jesus, how come you are not a disciple? How come you're not a deacon, if not in title, in duty? Uh, how come you don't serve, full of the Holy Ghost, servant ministers? Deacons are servant Ministers, that's, that's really what they are. A deacon is an ordained minister of an order ranking below that of a preacher or a priest. A deacon in the Greek is called diakonos, a servant minister, a waiter, servant, then of anyone who performs any service in administrator. Now, I've been in church for a long time. I've seen bishops, Pastors, choir directors, deacons, uh, ushers, I've seen them all serve. I've seen them all pick up paper. I've seen them all cut grass. I've seen all of them take food to the hungry. I've seen all of them do this. Amen. But it's time that we all work together. We need servant leaders. I was teaching this about two years ago and a few at least one got mad at me because he didn't want to be a servant leader in this church. And I'm telling you, if you don't want to serve in the kingdom of God, wherever you're at, there's a problem. So you got to be full of the Holy Ghost to serve. If you don't want to serve, maybe you're not full of God. Amen. And, and these deacons, seven, they was honest, full of the Holy Ghost, full of wisdom. In the book of Acts, it's amazing. Everywhere Peter and Paul, after he was converted to Saul and Philip, everywhere they went, they baptized people in the name of Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost filled the people and the multitude that they spoke to. When you're full of Jesus, you're serving, you serve with Jesus. You serve with his gospel, his good news. You serve with gladness and goodness. We all serve. I've seen a lot of preachers. Some don't serve. Some deacons don't serve. But when you're full of Jesus, you serve. Where are the supporting ministry today? Stephen was so mighty that they try to come against him. They try to talk against Stephen and, and refute uh, him. Uh, the uh, people in the synagogue, the Libertines, the Cyrenians, the Alexandrians, Cilia, uh, Cilicia, Asia, they disputed with Stephen. And you know what? They were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. When someone disputes you, if you're doing the work of God, they cannot resist. Hallelujah. They cannot resist the wisdom and the spirit by which you come by. So they start lying on him. And they said, oh, he's saying bad things about our God. Because he's making Moses say things that uh, Moses didn't say. And he's, he's wrong about the intent of the history. So the next chapter, he has a long sermon, a long testimony. And the history about the children of Israel, what they came through, through Moses, and what Moses' life was about, and Jesus in the Old Testament as well as the New. Uh, they had, he gave them a long speech, and he said, you know what? Y'all rejected me. Y'all rejected God in the Old Testament, and y'all wanted a calf. He said, you're the same way now. I'm going to tell you tonight, do not reject Jesus by refusing to serve, by refusing to believe in the God of the resurrection and the God of his spirit in us. Do not reject them. If you, re you reject them, you're the same as the children of Israel. Man, children of Israel that had the Ark of the Testimony, the Ark of the Covenant, the, the tabernacle, the traveling church. 
And Moses was gone too long, so they wanted to put their eyes and focus on another God that brought them out of Egypt. He said, you're the same. He talked with such wisdom and power of the Holy Ghost, they got mad. Got mad and, and a uh, servant leader has the face of an angel. I'm going to wind up right now. But in verse 15, 14, it says, For we have heard it him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. Shall change those customs which Moses delivered us. Don't hold me to a Saturday. Don't say I can't eat shrimp even though I'm allergic to it. Uh, don't say I can't uh, wear uh, Pants, if I'm a girl, if it's cold outside and they're appropriate, you can wear pants. Uh, don't be, uh, don't uh, get legalistic on me. Gee, uh, God, Jesus changed the customs which Moses delivered us. That Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place. Change the customs. You don't get salvation from customs. Hallelujah. You don't get love and power from customs and traditions. Only only the ones that are delivered and, and that are exercised in the power of God. And in truth, you've got to serve God in spirit and in truth. I come against uh, legalist, legalism and people that want to keep us in bondage. God died that I might have uh, life full of joy, full of love, full of happiness, abundance, good news. I come against the bondages uh, because when they... You put people put you in bondage and they say you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this. Yeah, a lot of things you have to be holy and obedience is better than sacrifice. But they'll lie on you. They'll lie on you. People will lie on you to keep you down, to keep you from serving the one true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In chapter 7, Stephen hammered that home right before he was stoned. Hammered it home, and it hit me when I was reading this. Even, I, even though I read it again, he had a passion. And even when he was being stoned, he said, Father, forgive them, just like Jesus on the cross. Forgive them, Lord. They don't know what they're doing. Forgive them. They need you, and they don't know that they need you. But they want to prevent uh, their, uh, their, their, their soul from being saved by your spirit. And they want the spirit of the same spirit that, uh, of idol worship. To take over them like in the dead Moses day. Forgive them, Lord. They need to do better. So when you are a servant leader, uh, when you are a deacon, we're looking for women and man deacon. And God's going to give me his spirit to make the right decisions on who shall be the deacon. A deacon is a mighty minister. Deacon is, has Holy Ghost power. Deaconess. There was deaconess in the Bible. Phoebe. And verse 15 says this, I'll leave you with this. And all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. When you're a servant leader, my, 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 you don't have to worry about being lied on. You don't have to worry about being separated from Jesus. You don't have to worry about not being lifted up. God will exalt you. When you're a servant leader, leader, your face is pure. Your countenance is peaceful. It's pure. Your heart must be pure to see Jesus. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And when your face, when you have, when you're a servant minister, a deacon, a lay member full of the spirit, find somebody to serve. Ask God to help you. Help me serve this community. This community is dying. This community is on drugs. This world needs you. It's full of hate. Help me serve and show an example of your love. Jesus, God will give you the face of an angel. Wow. Verse 15. Let's read it one more time and go on downstairs to Bible study. Because this book of Acts is good. It's going to be good all month long next month too. It's going to be so good. It's getting, I just feel God's spirit tonight. Uh, 15, and all that sat in the council, this is the council that uh, tried to defeat him, lie on him, and, and they couldn't dispute him. They couldn't uh, prevail. They sat in the council looking steadfastly on him. Look, look at my eyes. Look upon him. Like on Sunday, he was talking about how uh, they, Peter said, look on us, him and John, to the lame man. Look upon us. He, uh, uh, Isaac, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, I'll 
think of their, their word, their names in a moment. But uh, the man in the Old Testament, uh, they looked upon the boy's eyes before, put their eyes on their eyes before the boys was uh, brought back to life. But he said, they, their eyes, they looked steadfastly on him. They was focused and they saw the face of an angel. Looking for angels, looking for help, looking for protection. But you are the face of an angel when you decide to serve and to help God's people, help God's sheep. God's sheep sometimes need to hear his voice through you. The face of an angel, what a testimony. What an example of what we're supposed to look like. You, I just changed the subject and, and the title of this Bible study. Uh -huh. I just changed it right now. Amen. Uh, your face is supposed to look like an angel's face when you serve. When you serve, you look like an angel. When you do God's will, Jesus said, follow me. He said, feed my sheep to Peter and the disciples. And when you serve, you look like an angel. Ain't no reason, ain't no use in putting on makeup, putting on blush. And yeah, you know, they put a lot of black on their eyes now. They, I, I'm not judging. I'm not a woman. They put a lot of uh, eyelashes, long eyelashes on. And men have cages. Oh, my goodness. And earrings. <laughs> uh, it might be that you and we are trying to do too much because we don't have a server's mentality. We don't have the love, for, uh, love foundation. When you love and serve, and you have the spirit of God, and you have a good character, you have the truth in you, you look like an angel. Type in your message right now, I want to look like that angel. I want to look like Jesus. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this Bible study. We thank you for the beginning of our study on Stephen. Whether you have us go one or four uh, weeks on this, Lord, it will be satisfied. We thank you, Lord. Help us look like servants. Help us answer the call to be deacons, deaconesses, entitled or just in spirit and in action. Help us, Lord, to do your will. You said we got to serve, but we're our, you're our friend, even though we're servants like you, Lord. You call us friends. In the name of Jesus, help somebody, bring them out of bondage, save this land, help this world to pray in the name of Jesus. Help them come out of sickness and darkness and all sins, all sins, hallelujah. Not just one sin, but help them come out of all disobedience. In the name of Jesus, I come against that, that we might live and have abundant life. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. We pray that we have a mighty Bible study downstairs. In Jesus' name, amen. Join us uh, tonight in Bible study on the inbox and downstairs in person. Join us this Saturday, 1.30. The women will be talking about. They'll be eating and having fellowship downstairs in the fellowship hall. Bloom where you are planted. And then the men will be down there uh, tomorrow. And we will... Uh, no, Saturday at 5 o'clock, we'll be barbecuing and having Bible, uh, having testimony and just good fellowship. Do you thank God for good fellowship? Uh, you all have a good night. Uh, thank you for joining Jesus Tabernacle. We be, will be here at 10 o'clock Sunday morning where God will keep doing what he's doing and we'll move on to a perfection. God bless you. You all have a good night.